Hi, everyone. Uh, in today's video, we are going to solve some application problems. Uh, we are going to use two different methods. Uh, the first one is that we are going to set up an equation. And second one is that we are going to use a table, but eventually we are going to have an equation to solve. So uh, let's get started. Uh, the first one, uh, let's take a look at it. One number is six more than another number. The sum of the numbers is 40. Find those two numbers. So basically, uh, we have two unknowns, uh, two numbers. Uh, we don't know I, 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 the amount of any of the two numbers, but we do know the sum of the two numbers is 40. So the sum is 40. <laughs> Basically, that is our equation, right? When you add those two numbers together, let it equal to 40, that's our equation. But before we can have an equation, we have to represent those two numbers, right? We have two numbers, two unknowns. And theoretically, you can use two variables to represent those two numbers. And it's, a, it's not a problem to use two variables, but currently we are learning one variable equation. So we can only use one variable. And can we use one variable to represent two unknowns? The answer is yes, under one condition. And the condition is that those two unknowns are related. Are they related? Absolutely. One number is six more than the other one. So let's represent those two unknowns first. Uh, I'm gonna do this uh, particular example twice, just to show you in theory, it really doesn't matter which uh, number you represent by X, right? You can use any other variable by the way, but in theory, you can use X to represent uh, just one of these two unknowns. And then you represent the other one based on the relation between these two numbers. So let's say the first approach. So let's say this is the first number and this is the second number. Let's say if I use X to represent the first number, then the second number is six more. Let, let me relabel this. No, we're not gonna use first, second. Say this is a smaller number, let's do it that way. It's easier to communicate. This is a bigger number. So if I use X to represent a smaller number, then bigger number must be six more than that, right? That is the relation between the two numbers. So X plus six. Now, after we represent the unknown, we can set up equation. The sum of these two numbers is 40. So X plus X plus six equals 40. Uh, I don't have to use parentheses in here because in terms of calculation, it doesn't make any difference. The reason I use this pair of parentheses is just show that this is the second number. Other than that, there's no difference. So combine like terms, 2x plus six equals 40. And to solve for x, we move six to the other side. 2x equals 40 minus six. So 2x equals 34, x equals 17. Don't forget, we use x to represent smaller one and bigger one is six more than that, right? So x plus six equals 17 plus six, that's 30, uh, 23. And that is 23. So we can answer the question now. Those two numbers are uh, 17 and 23, right? So now let's look at our second approach. So approach number two. Now this is a smaller number and this is a bigger number. Now this time I'm going to use X 
to represent the bigger number. The smaller number that must be six smaller, six less than the bigger number, right? So x minus six. Now the sum is still 40, so x minus six plus x equals 40. So still true. Now let's solve it. Uh, 2x minus six equals 40. We move this as minus six to the other side. 2x equals 40 plus six. Now 40 plus six is 46. Now we divide by two on both sides to get x, that is 33. Now this time, since we use x to represent the bigger number, so the bigger number is 23, and the smaller number is a six less than that. That's a 17. You see, we still get exactly the same answer. So we, we can answer uh, the question. Uh, the numbers are 17 and 23. So the reason we can get the exact same answer, even though we use x to represent a different unknown is because we represent the relation correctly. We represent relations in terms of variable is still, uh, I mean, lo logically. We represent the unknown correctly. We represent the equation correctly. Sure, we get the same answer. So this example just show you, in theory, it doesn't matter if you have two unknowns, which one unknown you use X to represent it. That being said, in general, it is easier to represent the reference number by X. What is the reference number? It's the one that you compare other numbers to. We compare this number to this number, say more than this number. So usually if you use a, a variable to represent a reference, reference number, it's easier to represent the other unknown. That is, in general, it is true. Now let's look at uh, other examples. Uh, as a way, this is your first set of exercise uh, problems. And uh, all of the answers to the uh, exercise problems is in the comment area below the video. Now, this is our example number two. A carpenter is asked to make a rectangular frame out of an eight foot strip, uh, uh, eight foot strip wood. The length of the frame must be three times the width. And this is the relation between length uh, and width. Relation is always important. Uh, what must the dimensions be? So we are asked to find out the length and the width of the rectangle. So that means we use this eight foot uh, piece of wood to form a rectangular shape. And the total length of the rectangular shape will be uh, eight foot, eight feet long, right? So that means one, after we represent the length and the width of a rectangle, we try to find out the perimeter, which is total length of the, of the shape, and let it equal to eight feet. And that's our strategy to set up the equation. So let's say this is our rectangle. We don't know the length and the width, but we do know the relation between the two. Length is three times uh, as long as the width. So we mentioned in the previous example, uh, usually it is easier if we represent the reference by a variable like X. So reference is the number other numbers compared to. This one, length is three times as, much, as long as the width. In other words, as, as soon as we know the width, we multiply by three, we get length, right? So width is represented by X. The length going to be uh, 3X. And since we know for a fact that for a rectangle, opposite sides have equal length, right? So that's the total length we add them all together. So basically we use two times X because we have two sides with identical length and plus two times the length, which is three X, two of this. 
The total length is called a perimeter, but it is equal to eight. And guess what? It's four x plus six is eight x. Eight <laughs> x equal to eight. So x equals one. Uh, x is a width. So we can answer that width is one foot. And, and the length is three times as much. Okay. Three x equals three for sure. And the length, that's our answer, is three feet. So we solve it. The key is understanding the information and the representing the information correctly uh, in your equation. Then the solve equation you can answer. So this is your second exercise. Yeah, it's very similar to our example. Now let's move on to our next example. Now this time we are going to look at uh, some application problems involving uh, angles. So first, uh, let's look at uh, what is called a Cecilis triangle. Basically, it is a triangle with two sides uh, having equal length. The other one has different length, such as these examples. So we have two sides have equal length, the other one is different. Two sides have equal length, the other one, uh, the other one is the same, uh, but when we say a Cecilis triangle, we just require the two size with equal length. The other side could be different, but you uh, could be the same, but usually it's different. We just require that two sides uh, have equal length. Now let's look at example three. Suppose the length of each equal length side of a accessory triangle is twice the length of the base. So the third side has different on uh, length. If the perimeter is 75 centimeters, what are the lengths of the base and the size of equal length? Okay, this is easy enough in terms of understanding. So let's represent this quickly. And uh, we have a sensitive triangle. This side, these two sides have equal length. This is the base. Um, the relation is that. Uh, each of the equal length side is twice the length of the base. So we represent the reference by x, that's our x. Each one of this is twice as long. So 2x, 2x. So when we solve application problems, we always want to represent the unknown first. And then we set up the equation. The equation is given by this piece of information. The perimeter is 75 centimeters. Perimeter means total length. So x plus 2x plus 2x equals 75. And this is 5x. 5x equals 75. When we divide by 5 on both sides, uh, x is 15. And the unit is centimeters. Since x is the base, and the other side, uh, equal side length is twice as long. So 2x equals 30 centimeters. So now you can answer uh, the original question by saying that base is 15 centimeters and those uh, side that has equal length is say 30 centimeters, right? So we solve this problem. Now the next uh, exercise problem is here. Let's look at our next example. Uh, first, let's look at some terminologies. This time we are working with angles. Uh, we have three terminologies. One is called congruent angles and complementary angles. And the other one, the last one is supplementary angles. So definition for congruent angles is that two angles that have same measure. For example, angle B in here and angle Y in here, both measure uh, 
60 degrees. So these two are called congruent angles. Uh, what is complementary angles? Basically, con con uh, like this angle in this chart, A, B, D, A, B, D, that's 32 degrees, right? The other angle, D, B, C, D, B, C, and that angle is 58. You see, this, these two angles, the sum is 32 degrees plus 58 degrees, and that is 90 degrees. And that is exactly the definition of complementary angles, which says if the sum of two angles is 90 degrees, then those two angles are called complementary uh, angles. So this, this angle is complementary angle of this one. This angle is complementary angle of this, that one, just because they are to 90 degrees. And by the way, they don't have to be adjacent to each other. They draw it this way so that people can see they form a right angle, 90 degree angle. Other than that, they don't have to be adjacent to each other, okay? Now, the last one is called supplementary angles. And the definition is very similar. Uh, if we look at these two angles, angle DBA, which is 20 degrees, the other angle DBC, DBC is, one is 60 degrees. And notice that the sum of these two angles, two angles is 180 degrees. And that is the definition of supplementary angles, which says when, when the sum of two angles is 180 degrees, then they are uh, supplementary angles. One angle is supplementary angle of the other one. This angle is supplementary angle of this one. Okay, now let's look at our Example. Example number four. In designing a roof frame, uh, the architect wants the angle beam to meet the horizontal truss so that the outer angle measurement is 30 degrees more than twice the inner angle measurement. What are the angle measurements? So basically, we are solving for two angles. Basically, let's draw a simple truss, okay? It goes like this. This is called the inner angle. Uh, this is called the outer angle, okay? We have two angles. Um, basically, this relation says the outer angle is 30 degrees more than twice the inner, uh, inner angle. So compare the outer angle to the inner angle. And uh, from the previous very first example, we mentioned that we want to represent the reference unknown by a variable such as x, which makes uh, representing the second unknown easier. So this is our x because we compare outer angle to the inner angle. And the other one is 30 more than twice of this. Twice of that, 30 more. It's much easier to represent this outer angle if we use x to represent the inner angle. If we do something opposite using x to represent the outer angle, it's more difficult uh, to figure out what expression is the right expression to represent the inner angle. Oh, uh, in, in theory, even though there's no, no difference, you can use x to represent the e either one, but practically using x to represent the reference among is much, much easier. Okay, then where is our equation then? The equation is uh, natural, uh, naturally given. I mean, they don't have to give us. This whole thing is a straight angle. It's 180 degrees because these two angles are to a straight line. That straight line means 180 degrees. So 2x plus 30 plus x is 180. And uh, 3x plus 30 equals 180. Move 30 to the other side. 3x equals 180 minus 30. And 3x equals 150 degrees. And x equals 50 degrees. And the other one, 3x plus uh, 2x plus 30. So 2x plus 30. Actually, the other one, you can do it much faster because this, this two are come, uh, supplementary. It's just about use 180 minus this one, you get the other one. So this one must be equal to 130. 
So that you can answer the questions. The inner angle is 50 degrees. The outer angle is 130 degrees. And in this exercise, you have two, uh, uh, two, two problems to solve. Uh, okay, now let's move on to the next page to look at our uh, next example. Now this time we are going to use, this is our second learning objective. We are going to create a table to help us understand uh, the information in the description. Then through this table, we are going to set, uh, set up our equation, then solve it to get our answer. Uh, usually, this, this kind of application involves two unknowns, and uh, you're, go you're going to need four columns. The best way to do this is through examples. So let's jump to our first example. Uh, Silvador is an artist. A company produces prints of two of his paintings. So two paintings are involved. The first print uh, sells for 45. The second print sells uh, some, uh, the first 45, the second one 75. And uh, this 45, 75 is corresponding to the second column, we call it value. Category is the description of your two items, such as the first print, the second one, right? The first painting or the second painting, right? And then uh, we're looking for relations because relations give us uh, the equation. He's told that during the first day of sales, the company sold six more of the $75 ones than the $45 ones. So that's a relation between how many items are sold of each, of each print. Uh, with a total income of $1,410, how many of each print were sold? Okay, now let's fill in this table. First category means two unknowns, two, two uh, items. Give it the description, doesn't matter as long as uh, you can differentiate them. So let, let me call this the first one, this is the second one, okay. Then value, the first one sells for 45 each, so 45. Second one sells for 75 each, right? Then third one, number of items. This is a relation between the two items. This is where you represent those two unknowns because we ask how many of each. This is how many, how many items of each sold. Uh, it, it says the company sold six more of the $75 ones than the $45 ones, than the $45 ones. This is our reference. So we use X represent reference. The other one is six more, right? X plus six. Now we represent both already. Now how about income, sales? Each one sells for 45 for the first print, but you have X of them. So multiply them together, 45 X. So if you sell, if you sell six, uh, two of them, it's gonna be $90 to make sense when we multiply it, right? The other one is the same. Multiply the, the unit unit price and uh, times number of items sold. So this is 75 times x plus six. Now, after uh, we, we uh, fill in this table, now it's time to set up the equation. The equation is given by this piece of information. The total income is 1410. As these two together, this is income from two prints. As them together must be 1410. So 45x plus uh, 75 times x plus 6 equals 1410. Now it's time to do some calculation. And uh, we got a 45x plus 75x plus 450. If you times 75 by 6, it's 450 equals 1410, add this two together, that's 120x. And we move this uh, 450 to the other side, 1410 minus 450, let's do that. 1410 
minus 450, 960. So 120 X equals 960 and divide by 120 on both sides, X equals to eight. So X is $45 once. And the other, the other one is six more, right? X plus six, and that is 14. So you can answer questions now. So they sold eight $45 ones and uh, 14 um, $75 ones. Okay, I'll move on to our next one. Uh, again, two more exercise uh, problems here. Similar setup, just try practice. This table is a good tool. Now let's look at our next example. Uh, Jasmine sells two sizes of holly straps and the larger size. So we have larger one and the smaller one. These are two items. Uh, description, smaller ones. And uh, the larger one sells for 30 each and the smaller ones 20 each. So we can just fill in table at the same time when we read it. And uh, that this she sold uh, 16 strums. That means total number of items 16. And for a total of 390, so total amount 390. And but she forgot how many of each size, how many items each one sold. We don't we don't know. Uh, she she forgot. So we need we need we need to figure that out. Now represented items, you don't know any one of these. We are certainly we are, we are not told how many more of one than the other, right? But we have total. That means in this case, you can represent either one of this by X because the other one must be the total minus X to make sense, right? Doesn't matter. So this is X, the other one must be 16 minus X. Now, after we represent the number of items, we can represent the income from each item very easily because we just multiply the unit price times the number of items. So 20 X, is a 30, 60 minus X, and the sum must be 290, right? So let's set up equation, plus 30 times 16 minus X equals 290. 20 X plus, this is 480, uh, minus 30 X equals 390. 20 minus 30 compound like terms, that's negative 10 X. We can move 480 to the other side at the same time. 390 minus 480. So we get negative 10 X equals negative nine, uh, is that negative 90? Yeah, negative 90. So X equals nine. Since we use X representing the larger one, the smaller one must be 16 minus X, that's a seven. So answer is that she sold nine items of larger ones, larger ones, and the seven of smaller ones. Yeah, we saw it. You see, basically this whole process is mm -hmm. the same. So try to make sure you do some exercise problem. Once you do one or two, maybe three, you get familiar with this process. Next time you see a similar problem, you can identify this is a similar problem really, really quick, and you can solve it really, really quick. And this is the last, your last exercise set. You have two questions in here. And that is all for this video. Uh, see you in the next one.